The Old Testament reading for today comes from Numbers chapter 11. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for today comes from Acts chapter 2. It is when the Spirit comes at Pentecost and all God's people prophesy. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and sides of the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we'll sing our hymn of the day, Water, Blood, and Spirit Crying, hymn 597. Water, blood, and spirit crying by their wit is testifying to the one whose death defying life has come with life for all. In a watery grave are buried 
all our sins that Jesus carried. Christ, the ark of life, has buried us across death's raging flood. Dark the way, yet Christ precedes us. Past the scowl of death he leads us, spreads a table where he feeds us with his body and his blood. Though around us death is seething, God is to edge sword unsheathing, by his spirit life is breathing with his through the living active word. Spirit, water, blood entreating, working faith, and it's completing in the one whose death defeating life has come with life for all. Which brings us to our gospel and the basis for our sermon. This brief passage from John chapter 7. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. We go to our sermon hymn, which is hymn 831, How Shall They Hear Who Have Not Heard? How shall they hear who have not heard? News of a Lord who loved and came, nor known his reconciling word, nor learned to trust a Savior's name. To all the world, to every place, Neighbors and friends and poor old lands preach the good news of saving grace. Go while the great commission stands. Whom shall I send? Who hears the call? Constant in prayer through toil and pain, telling of one who died for all, to bring a lost world home again. Lord, hear am I, your fire impart, to this poor cold, self-centered soul, touch but my lips, my hands, my heart, and make a world for Christ my goal. Spirit of love within us move, Spirit of truth, in power come down, so shall they hear and find and prove Christ is their life, their joy, their crown.